Save Cressingham Gardens. Save our homes. No more demolition. Save our homes. Save Cressingham Gardens. If this decision goes ahead tonight, the decision to demolish the whole of Cressingham Garden Estate, what we're actually being offered, if they keep their promises, is replacement housing, but it will not be council housing. And any new building done on this estate will not be council housing. The majority of the new housing will not be affordable. Lambeth Council said that they would not go against our wishes. They said they would tell us what they were going to do. They said they would tell us the truth and not lie to us. They said we had five choices on the table and that we didn't need to worry about demolition. Well, that's strange because I don't hear anything but demolition from the council in the last two weeks. They talk of democracy. They talk of a cooperative council. And yet Matthew Bennett announces our demolition on Twitter before he has the courtesy to tell anyone on the estate. If Lambert Council can spend millions of pounds on a new town hall, millions of pounds on a bridge across the Thames, which is of no use to the people of Lambert, why can't they spend the money in the local people? After all, it's our money that they are spending. They are tearing apart our community brick by brick. And we're not going to let them! We've done here for the best part of uh, 40 years now? Yes. There's been very little investment in this estate from the beginning. When we came here first, the windows were wooden windows and in the first 15 years those windows were painted once over rotting wood. I'd only been here about three months before they put in the new PVC windows and there's been lots of problems with those so I've got leaking windows which are still leaking after like 13 years. When people complain to the council, the council take forever. By the time they come to do it, it's three times worse than it was when they were first told about it. The job I got, which is working in the parks, and I've noticed that there's not enough equipment and stuff, so we have to sort of make do what we've, what we've got. It's worse for here, because it's an estate. Uh, they need this equipment, they need to keep you up to the decent standards, which the government said that they were supposed to do. We heard mutterings about refurbishment back in 2012 and people were thinking oh at last the council may be actually getting off their asses after about 10 years of doing nothing and sorting some of these places out and it is only some of these places a lot of them are in pretty good condition considering the amount of neglect they've had towards the end of 2013 we actually heard their five options option one refurbish the entire estate. Option two, refurbish the entire estate and rebuild the six flats that have been empty at the bottom of the estate for the last 15 years. Option three was option two plus some infill building which would have given 30, 40 new homes. Option four, partial demolition of the estate and rebuilding and refurbishment of the rest. Option five, full demolition. We were then given workshops by the council in order to try to arrive at a conclusion about what we wanted to do. We've got about 10% disabled people and about 10% senior citizens on here, which is higher than most other estates around here. Very hard to access workshops, um, which they held in the winter, in the e in weekday evenings, making it quite difficult for people like me and the elderly to get there and making it difficult for anyone who works or has kids to get there as well. So, quite poor attendance. We sat at a meeting down there and I kept saying, because he said, well, it won't be option five. And I kept saying, well, why don't you take option five off the table then? Well, no, because it's there for consideration. I said, but you just said you're not considering it. So why don't you take it off the table? Well, of course they weren't going to take it off the table because they'd already made up their minds that that was the one they were going for. In every window, it was choose option one, choose option one. All the way around, 
and without any consultation, without any thought at all, said, well, we're not even considering options one, two, three, and four, so we've only got five left, which is regeneration. For quite a long time I've kind of not believed that this we will be in this situation where my house is going to be demolished. You know, I think you kind of bury your head in the sand a little bit because you don't ever imagine that that is going to happen. And you know, um, pay my mortgage, I'm a teacher, pay my taxes. They have never told us the truth. Two and a half years of lying, prevaricating, telling us one thing, doing another thing, cancelling meetings at the last minute so that you're always wrong-footed. Matthew Bennett said to me one day at a meeting, how can we get your trust back? And I said, well, you could start telling the truth. That would be a very good place to start. I received an email uh, <laughs> last week from a tenant on Cressingham Gardens, which I'll quote in part because it's quite long, in which they said, I am with you on wanting to demolish the estate. My flat is falling apart. My windows won't open. The kitchen ceiling is cracking and falling down. I'm embarrassed to bring any friends or family to my flat. I hope you'll demolish the property and do the right thing. That view is not shared, I know, by all residents. But that experience of living in damp, decrepit conditions is all too common for tenants who really do deserve better. A commissioned survey indicated that problems on the estate were majorly due to a lack of maintenance and neglect. We used to have the council around three, four times a year during the, uh, the winter to clear the gutters and no one had drainage problems from about 10 12 years ago lucky if you saw them once a year i think we went four years without them clearing the gutters once if you don't clear the gutters you're going to get damp penetration somewhere along the line this decision is primarily about providing people particularly tenants on pressing gardens with a decent home that meets lambeth housing standard that we know cannot be provided through refurbishment. An independent surveyor commissioned by Cressingham Gardens residents indicated that costs for refurbishment have been inflated by up to £7 million. What they actually did was calculated for the complete refurbishment of every property, i.e. every property had its windows ripped out, new kitchens, new bathrooms, etc, etc. Of course, only a third of the properties actually need that. The best case scenario would be almost £10 million of refurbishment when the budget is just over three. This is the only way that we can actually provide decent quality homes for existing tenants. That is the only I know it is not necessarily popular with people in the room, but it is the, it is the only way that it can be delivered. There is no explanation how the full demolition option has miraculously turned into a viable option over the last couple of months. At the beginning of this year, the council was still explicitly telling residents that full demolition was not Viable. The viability of the full demolition of Cressingham Gardens is dependent upon the setup of a special purpose vehicle, SPV, and outside the housing revenue account. However, buried in the report is a statement that is unknown yet whether the SPV structure is viable. How can then the Regen team claim that full demolition is viable if they don't know if the SPV structure is viable? Page 21 of the viability report states the financial model has been prepared with limited information and that indicated finance costs will not be accurate. There are a lot of caveats at the end of that document. 
Yet the second page of the main report states, the underlying financial assumptions are correct, which contradicts these supporting documents. Assumptions are not correct, they are assumptions. This estate alone pays in over a million pounds a year. Pay, they pay in, just this estate alone. I'd like to say to them, who do you think pays your fees for being on the council? We do. And yet we're not to be listened to, we're not to be heard, we're not to have a voice. One of them was a wellbeing project team and before they could even meet to um, assess what this would do to the wellbeing of the people that live here, they cancelled that out. They didn't wait for them to submit a report, nothing. £1.4 million pounds is about to be spent on repairs to Cressing and Gardens estate. The majority of pathways are also currently being replaced. <laughs> it seems incompetent and financially unsound and lacks business acumen to spend this money and then demolish. For my block alone, it's going to be £20,000 alone for the scaffolding. That scaffolding should only cost about five, six thousand pounds When you actually go through the bills, okay, there was a potential savings on my block alone of £64,000, leaseholders are getting bills for certain amounts and it can range from anything from about £1,000 up to £14,000 and, and, and my personal bill was, is about £9,600. If we had gone for a refurbishment that would not have addressed the overcrowding on the estate where families do not have enough bedrooms to meet their needs. In the housing needs survey, a quarter of residents on the estate said that they were overcrowded. I've been in my flat for 24 years. In the last month, which you wouldn't have a stupid do about, I have given up my flat for a lady on the estate to have a bigger home. So we're doing it by ourselves. I can't see you doing anything. We are one community. And it's a community that is solving its own problems, including the overcrowding, and it just needs the support if you would actually listen to us and work with us. They reckon when they demolish this and rebuild it, there will be 23 extra homes. Now that area down there which has been idle, empty, for a number of years, because they haven't spent any money on it, they could put 23 homes down there without touching this area at all. They keep saying about the 21,000 on the housing list, but of course these 23 ho homes are going to make a big dent in that 21,000, aren't they, for a start. Do you really need to sort of smash up 309 properties um, just for a net gain of 23 council properties? And then at the end of the day, the council are going to be winners because, because they're going to build 100 plus properties and sell them all, send them off to private investors. This demolition would not address Lambeth's housing shortage in any significant way. Yes. Mm. The viability analysis states that Lambeth will not meet their targets. That's a quote from the viability analysis. <laughs> more worryingly, the equality impact assessment report states that rent and living costs in the area will increase as a result of this regeneration. You will be in fact primarily building new homes for buy to let landlords and for people, and I will quote you your quote on this, with either higher capital assets or higher incomes. You are not building for the community care. And it started when they sold the Dick Shepherd's School. Something like 10 million, and it was all for private ownership or their affordable homes. They knew they needed a lot of homes then. Why didn't they mark some of that for social housing? And I think when they saw how much money that was worth, they started to think in terms of this estate and how much money it could bring them. I quote, a special purpose vehicle is a private company with the council as the sole shareholder. So the question that comes to my, my mind is, who is the landlord? Is the landlord the private company or is it the council? And if it's not the council, you know, my concern is this, 
is how do we guarantee, or what guarantees can we receive, that our rents are not going to be doubled or tripled in, in the subsequent years? Our tenants are the best you can get. They're protected um, under English law. To change them, you'd have to go create an act through the House of Parliament. If we were to go to uh, tenancies under the 1988 Act, which is the assured tenancies, um, they can be changed at a much more local level. So, you know, you might start out with a tenancy that favourably compares with now, um, but it could be changed at any point. We've also got no clarity yet as to what our rents will be. And whereas the rents might be set for the, the uh, tenants who are currently reside there, what would happen after those original tenants move out? There's no guarantee that future tenants coming into the social properties couldn't be put on the so-called flexible short-term tenancies and the rents would go up. The regeneration of Fresno Gardens will result in at least 35% or higher increases in housing costs across all tenures. That's council tenants, leaseholders, private rental at least. In particular, homeowners are going to be facing a 50% increase in housing costs an essential guarantee that many of the families and households will be caught in a cycle of chronic overcrowding and decline into poverty and potential homelessness. I see it in your faces that you don't believe me, and I feel that this is an exaggeration. However, I would like to refer you to the article in the International Journal of Law in the Built Environment about Mikesfield North Regeneration. It describes the case of a family who had lived on the estate for 20 years, but was unable to port their mortgage. Subsequently, because they were offered £200,000 less than the local market average for the home, they were also declared ineligible for a new shared ownership property due to insufficient household income. With no possibility of buying a new house in London and with no sustainable prospect of renting privately in the area, amounting to £2,400 a month compared to a previous monthly mortgage for payment of under £500, the family was evicted in August 2014 having been told to declare themselves homeless, to access temporary housing, and they are currently split up and living in friends' houses with no apparent route back to their neighborhood. Shame. Shame. The offer you made to the homeowners of Mikesfield North is better than offer now on the table to residents on Cressing and Piardent, and Lambeth officers and councillor Matthew Bennett have stated in very clear terms that they will not ever consider such an offer again. In regards to your proposals, it's considered uh, an insult, to be honest. We've only been receiving half of an A4 page document, which the majority of your information is therefore given to leaseholders where you've put us under the same category. Um, I would like to assure you that all freeholders will want to stay as freeholders and will not be compensated by anything other than that they would give you a compulsory purchase order so or there there are they are saying that possibly we could buy or could move into a, a new property the kind of equivalent of a two bedroom like this is but it would probably be double the money that i'm paying it'd be shared equity so it it'd just cost me a lot more money and really I can't, I can't afford something more expensive round here. I came to be about a year and a year and a half ago, and they made a completely derisory offer um, of about two hundred eighty thousand pounds, which to me is which which to me is completely unacceptable. There was one bedroom flat just on the other side of the park, and that was going for half a million pounds, and it's much much tinier than where I live. Honestly, it's like a box. I really love the architecture of the house. I mean, I've done a lot of work on the house. It gives me a lot of joy living here. I really, really like it. I think probably my only choice would be moving out of London. My daughter's at a local secondary school, and she's got... She will sit GCSEs in 2018. So that's sort of, you know, a bit of a worry. Creskin has been around since the 1970s and is a rare and beautiful estate which are quite hard to find in London these days. I've lived here with my mum and my cat for 13 years, and I've settled contently in a split-level house. All my friends and family love the house. They always praise it. They say, oh, I love coming to your house. Um, it's just amazing. Your estate is amazing. Um, and 
I don't want to move out of London before I, I finish school. So, um, especially when the house prices are so high. Um, and also, a lot of young residents um, are in a similar position as I am. The 20th century society have recommended this estate for listed status. English Heritage have recommended it be designated a conservation area. Save Britain's Heritage have communicated a very strong objection to the proposals and are poised for full public inquiry. We all get on so well, like we, the tenants, freeholders and leaseholders, we have a really good community spirit. We're just ruining people's lives. We love our homes, we don't want to be moved out. And it's just, you know, why? Say it's not viable. So it's not viable. Yeah, I think we need to go to another party called the Tories. Because that's what is, you're, you're like. Matthew Bennett. You should be ashamed to call yourselves Labour. You should resign. Yeah, you should resign, Matthew Bennett. They're ripping away a heart and the soul of a community. We have so much support. I just want everyone to rally round and, you know, help us save our homes, man. Save our homes. Until. The last breath leaves my body, I shall fight them. Every step of the way. And if we manage to put a spanner in the works every step of the way, that'll show them that they cannot ride roughshod over people's homes, their feelings, their emotions, their, their whole being and destroy a community that is good. This is practically a crime-free estate. They should be holding this up as an example of how all estates in Lambeth should be. We've been given permission to take Lambeth to court, but before we can do that, we have to raise 10,000 pounds. Even like donating a pound to help with legal costs for fighting would be really brilliant. I'm sure it would enough sympathetic people out there who will see it our way and will support us and help us and I hope they do.